Gates. This looks boring, but it's not. Oh, this is fascinating. Um, so this is at Provisional. What we're it's a spreadsheet. What we're looking at here is your proposed production schedule. Um, so clearly, at Provisional stage, you may not know exactly, you know, when you're going to start your shoot or when you're going to start pre. Um, but give us an idea. It's helpful. And and what we're really looking at here is how, if you think about what I was talking about with the SAC test earlier in terms of where was your film made and where are you spending your money. This is really one of the key triggers for us. And we go, oh, okay. Um, this company spent a week's pre in the UK, two weeks shoot in the UK, and did four weeks of music work in the UK. So we can just immediately see, oh, okay, the whole production did not take place in Australia. And we'll be looking, when we get your budget, we'll be looking you know, that will trigger us and we'll go, okay, well, where are those items budgeted for? And then we'll be looking at your Quate spreadsheet to work out whether you have excluded or not excluded those elements. So this um, date section is important and it has relevance to both SAC in terms of where you're making your film and where you're spending your money, but also has relevance to Quate. Um, but really the key thing here for us is um, you can only claim Quate for um, if you do any offshore work, you can only claim quite if your project meets the Gallipoli Clause. Just hold for a second yep. before we get to Gallipoli Clause. I just want to explore this a little bit more. <laughs> um, people make mistakes on this all the time. And okay? there's actually a mistake on this one. I is there? So. There yeah. is a mistake on that one. Yeah. We made an error. Actually, that's funny. Yeah. That is often where people make mistakes in that box. So we did that deliberately. Yep. Um, this here, this is the total post weeks. Literally, it doesn't, it's not going to be that totaled. It is going to be date one of post to the end of post. Um, and it won't be the total of these because they will happen concurrently. So just keep in mind that. Um, and obviously what we'd actually expect if we'd done this correctly and not deliberately made an error is that um, yeah, that, that and say. that should equal that, yeah. always. And this, this, as Susan said, triggers a lot of things for us. It triggers um, an assessment of those couple of matters in the SAC test, but it, all, it can also do interesting things, like in this one, we've got the music's being done in the UK. Now, if you've got in your application form that it's an Australian composer, it's going to raise a question for us, because it's unlikely that you're going to be doing the music in the UK with an Australian composer. <coughs> you might be, but that's another example of one of those things that you should preempt. It's something that looks a little weird. Mm. We don't want to have to ask you about it. And if you can answer it by providing just a little bit of contextual information with the application form, it'll save everyone a truckload of time. It might be Nick Cave. And it if might it was be Nick, Nick Cave. Cave and he was composing the music in the UK, it would be non quake Absolutely. Which you can work out from reading your attic lives. Um. <laughs> God, we're nerds. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just dashing around here. OK, the Gallipoli Clause. Um, OK, this is all about claiming quake for offshore shooting. So there is a very limited provision in our legislation where you can claim expenditure um, incurred outside Australia as quake. And my understanding is this originally came from the documentary sector, who, you know, they might be going to the Galapagos Islands to make a film about, you know, the mating season of unusual turtles, or they might be going to Gallipoli to make a documentary about G Gallipoli. And oh, as if anyone's <laughs> going to be making a film about Gallipoli in the next couple of years. So, I think um, we've got about 12 on the slate. You know, clearly all those projects would have been developed and nurtured and, you know, written and directed and produced by Australians. So it was deemed, you know, reasonable that the legislation kind of stretched to allow for some quake to be claimed when you're shooting offshore. Um, but there are, of, of course, um, as I said, it is limited. And what, what we're talking about, there's three limbs of a test here that need to be met. And the first one is, um, does the subject matter of your film reasonably require the use of the overseas location? And that might sound a little bit wordy. But what we're looking at here, say, for example, you're making a film about um, an Australian composer who's working in a university in Germany and part of the film takes place in Germany, then clearly the subject matter of the film reasonably requires you to go to that location. Uh, or again, if you're making a documentary about, you know, going to interview, you know, people in Africa, then the subject matter of the film does require you to go there. Mm. And projects that find difficulty in sort of meeting this um, cause, Limb. Issue, limb, um, would be something like um, if something had a fantasy setting or was set in a parallel universe, for example, 
and you wanted to go to you know, Nevada because you think Nevada looks like Mars, then actually that's not the subject matter of the film that is taking you to that location. So you actually would not be, you wouldn't meet the Gallipoli Clause. And the other key projects are animations. Um, you know, you might go and choose to do some animation work in a studio in India or China or Korea, and the subject matter of that film is not requiring you to go to those locations. So that's really important to remember. The other thing that um, projects often get in a bit of trouble with is about use of sound stages. Mm. That's highly unlikely that the subject matter of film is reasonably yep. requiring you to go to offshore sound stages because we've got a few here. Yep. They're pretty good too. Yeah, so that's the first thing. If you don't get past that point, then you know your project doesn't meet the Gallipoli Clause. And the second one is that it is only for the principal photography of the film. And Helen and I are going to talk about this in a bit more detail at the end of the session in terms of how this is represented at final certification. Um, but if you're going over there for your shoot, that's fine. Um, but if you go on a location recce for three weeks to Africa, then you can't claim any expenditure to do with that trip. Or if you've got some pre-production say three weeks pre in London, just before your six week shoot in London, then that three weeks, you can't claim anything to do with that first three weeks because it's not principal photography. And some people, I've had a few questions lately about people saying, oh, we're shooting in Australia, but I've sent my you know, location manager off to France to do a recce, but the shoot's taking place here, so isn't that principal photography? And it's not. It has to be, the principal photography has to be taking place in that offshore location. Um, and lastly, it's just to do with Australian residents. Um, so it's what we call remuneration for Australian residents for tax purposes. Um, and again, we'll talk about this in detail of what we're looking at at final. So, I mean, really, a really basic example is you've got an Australian DOP who's going overseas for a shoot. The subject matter requires you to go there. And any, any um, remuneration associated with that person will be quite. So, you know, her fee, her accommodation, her travel expenses will all be quite. But the question here isn't actually about their nationality. We refer to Australians, but that means Australian residents for tax purposes. So literally, are they an Australian taxpayer? So Nick Cave, for example, <coughs> um, obviously he, that for composition, let's say that's irrelevant. Let's say you've got Nick Cave starring in your film. He lives in the, in mm. the UK. He's not an Australian tax resident. So you're not going to get his salary to be quite which can be an issue for actors because, let's face it, there are a lot of Australian actors that don't yeah. live here. It's tricky and, and it is explained in detail in the at a glance and on the website version there's links to the Australian Tax Office. So mm. you can I think the important thing to remember about the Gallipoli <coughs> Clause though is because this is the way it's set up, it's intrinsically tied to subject matter and location shoots. Mm. It's about allowing you to use a location that is needed by your subject matter. It's not about anything else, so it's not about pre, it's not about post, it's not about making up the fact that you might want to shoot somewhere because it looks nice, does the subject matter of the film reasonably require that, the use of that location? But it's not an exact location necessarily. The way the explanatory memorandum to the legislation outlines it is it says that if you're making a film about Gallipoli, and it's weird that we call it Gallipoli Clause because Gallipoli was shot in South Australia, um, <laughs> that you might need to be to go to Gallipoli to shoot, but you may well not actually have access to Gallipoli. So you might be able to shoot somewhere else in Turkey, and that's fine, because that subject matter is reasonably required by the location. And it's probably also really important to note that this um, also applies if your film's an official co-production. Um, you know, that's a whole different ball game, and you're either eligible for a co-production or you're not. But if your project is an official co-production and you're applying for the offset, then the Gallipoli clause still applies. So just because you're making a French-Australian co-production, it doesn't mean you can go and do some animation in France and meet the Gallipoli Clause because mm -hmm. it's a co-production.